everybody, welcome back. This is Excel Video 422. Worked on a project last week for a group that said, hey, Nate, give us a list of all our female patients between ages 50 and 74 who we've seen in the last three years at these clinics who haven't had a mammogram in the past year. When you're ready to start looking at quality issues in your practice, whether it's a patient-centered medical home or an ACO, or you're just ready to really attack quality with custom reports, I'd love to help you. We're going to do one more define a range to work on in Excel VBA video before we move on to another topic. And for this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dynamically define a range. We're going to do it with code so that if the range changes, we can get it anyway. And here's the example. Let me walk through it kind of a step at a time. We're going to define a little variable that, for want of a better term, we're going to call it A. And we're going to use a loop here. We're going to talk a lot more about loops in upcoming Excel videos. It says for and next. So every time there's an A, we're just going to keep looping through this until we run out of A. And the way we're going to define A is we're going to go to a worksheet called Shade Blank Cells. And then we're going to look at the cells. And here's the reference we're looking for. I put a little note out here. Remember, the cells is row, comma, column. Even though you might do look at cell B10, which is co column row, we're going to do row column with cells. And what that's going to do is the rows is going to be rows.count, comma, one. So we're going to go to the first column, which is column A, right? In column A, we're going to do end and then this XL up will, will take us end to the bottom. And then XL up is like doing end in the up arrow. So we're going to go to the bottom and then end and up to get up to the top. And what that's going to do is dynamically count the number of rows that are in the spreadsheet that have data. Remember, when you do down uh, or end and down in a normal Excel spreadsheet, it'll go all the way down till it finds uh, blank rows or columns and that kind of thing. We're doing the same thing here. What this entire expression here is doing is it's saying, hey, define A as from one to as many rows as there are with data. That's all we're doing. And then what this if statement does, it, it, and what you'll notice it starts with if and ends with end if, and there's an is empty function. So what we want to know is start at the top for one to as many rows as there are, look at each row. Next day says go to the next row, go to the next row, go to the next row. When we get to that row, what are we going to do? If the worksheets shade blank cells tab, a comma one. What's a comma one? A is just what row we're on. If column A in the row we're on is empty, then all we're going to do is look at this cell, and that's all this is, shade blank cells dot cells A1. If this row is blank, if it's empty, then we're going to change the range. That's what this resize does. We're going to change the range from being just one cell to go out five columns. One row, five columns, and we're going to change the color. Let me show you what it does, and then we'll walk through it one more time. So I'm going to highlight this. Before I run it, I'll show you what the spreadsheet looks like to start with. So I've got my providers and um, my quarters out here, and I've got the number of patients that they saw at whatever location and things like that. What I want to know is I want to be able to shade these blank row, whoops, that blank row and this blank row between providers where this is blank. So what we're going to do. Come back over here and let's run this baby. Come back here. And now we've been able to shade blank rows. Now watch Washington is has something here, but it's blank out here. And the reason it didn't shade is because we're looking at the first column, column A. And if this is blank, go out five columns and one row wide, resize the area from one to five and shade it. Let's go back and look at the code one more time. For and next says we're going to we're going to loop through and do as many rows as we find data in. And that's going to be critical as we look at loops going forward is we don't want to always be limited to just have 10 rows. This only works if you have five columns or whatever. We can do as many as we need to. We're going to look at this cell reference where the number of rows is and go to the bottom and then arrow up. So if we end it up, it's going to tell us how many rows there are. For every row, look at the row we're on and column A and tell me if it's blank. If it's blank, 
resize the area to not just be one column wide, but make it five column wide, five columns wide, and change the color. I hope that makes sense. The thing I want to show you is a couple of things. For and next, that loop is going to help us dynamically define a range. We're going to use this trick, this rows count and end Excel up, to help us get to the edge of our data more than once in upcoming Excel videos. The if empty thing is helpful and resizing the range once you find what you're looking for. Once I find what I'm looking for in column A, I can make that range as many columns or as many rows as I need to to change the color or do whatever else I need to do. A little bit complex, but at the end of the day, if we can do that, we can do all kinds of things with VBA and macros. Stay tuned. We'll talk more about how you might loop through cells and rows and columns and all that good stuff in upcoming Excel videos. Thanks for watching.